Welcome to BBC London, I'm Nikki Ford. Next week's strike action on the Tube has been called off. Unions have been in negotiations with TfL bosses about pensions and work conditions, with Aslef saying real progress has been made. Our transport correspondent Tom Edwards has more. Well, this was going to be a really big tube strike. It was going to go on over six days. It would have caused a lot of disruption. In the last hour or so, the three main unions, Unite, RMT and ASLEF, the drivers' union, they have suspended the action. That's because there was a surprise breakthrough, really, over this issue of pensions, a really thorny issue, a red line for the unions. They did not want them touched. What has been revealed is that TfL and the government say there will not be any changes to the pensions if they happen until at least 2026 and any changes to working conditions would have to be done through negotiations. That seems to have been enough for the unions to suspend uh, this very disruptive action. We have got some reaction just in from the mayor. He says... Uh, it's really welcome news for Londoners that the trade unions have suspended their planned strikes next week. Um, negotiation is always the best way forward and this shows what we can achieve by working uh, with the trade unions. We've got some reaction from the trade unions. The RMT, they say this, there has been significant progress. However, this is interesting, however, this is not the end of the dispute, of the dispute nor is it a victory for the union as yet. Uh, RMT strike mandate remains live until October and we are prepared to use it if necessary. So while this is good news, next week's um, tube strike is off, it's suspended. This might not be the end of the matter over pensions. As we've been hearing, the Conservatives have narrowly held on to the parliamentary seat of Uxbridge and South Ryslip with a majority of just 495 votes. Labour came second in a closely fought contest. The Conservative candidate Steve Tuckwell said the Labour Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan's plans to expand the ultra-low emission zone played a part in the win. Our reporter Leila Hayes has been in Uxbridge this morning and sent this report. The Prime Minister and the new Conservative MP for Uxbridge and South Ryslip at a local cafe this morning. Steve Tuckwell held on to Boris Johnson's former seat by just 495 votes. But in a bruising night for the Tories, this was a big win. No one expected us to win here, but Steve's victory demonstrates that when confronted with the actual reality of the Labour Party, when there's an actual choice on a matter of substance at stake, people vote Conservative. Steve Tuckwell is duly elected. But the Conservatives' victory in Uxbridge was about much more than party politics. The expansion of the ultra-low emission zone was the issue on the doorstep. Sadiq Khan has lost Labour this election. In his but the mayor isn't backing down. We do want to clean up the air in London. I think it's a uh, human right, not a privilege. Nobody puts up with dirty water, white, white dirty air. But we're going to carry on listening. Labour had been hoping to take this seat and their candidate, Danny Beals, tried to distance himself from the ULES expansion, saying it wasn't the right time. But the Tories made the issue front and centre of their campaign and it seems to have worked. It was ULES' fault. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely them. Why do you say that? Uh, because uh, Labour are all for it. Most of the people who live here are against the uh, ULES stuff. They're not ready yet. I mean, everybody that I know that actually uh, drives their car, they've all said about that. And a load of them just said, we won't be able to use our cars, you know, and how are we going to get to work and things like that. There's no doubt expanding the ULEZ to outer London areas like Uxbridge is controversial. And this election result shows how strongly many feel. Leila Hayes, BBC London. Marks & Spencer's plans to bulldoze and rebuild its flagship Oxford Street store by Marble Arch have been rejected. The company wanted to build a new 10-storey building in its place. The Housing Secretary, Michael Gove, who rejected the plan, said the design of the new building would harm the heritage of the area. A new campaign calling on men to challenge misogynistic comments and behaviour is being launched by City Hall. 
Research by the Mayor's Office found two in three men in the capital wanted to intervene in situations but didn't know what to say, with one in four men under the age of 35 regretting not calling out a friend or family member for their behaviour. The 75th anniversary of the post-war London Olympics is being celebrated at the Herne Hill Velodrome in South London. The Velodrome is one of the last remaining Olympic venues from the 1948 Games and is still used by the community with over 50,000 visits last year. The Women's World Cup is underway in Australia and New Zealand. England's first match is against Haiti tomorrow morning. And before the squad departed for the Southern Hemisphere, we spoke to one of London's very own Lionesses about the team's chances of adding the World Cup to their European title. Chris Legg reports. It was English football's proudest moment since 1966, but the Lionesses didn't just bask in the glory. London-born Arsenal defender Lotta Vuban Moy was determined they should capitalise on the moment. Within the space of two days, we'd written a, a letter to Rishi Sunak and Liz, Liz Trust, um, and we'd outlined our demands to ensure that girls can go to school and can participate in football like their male counterparts. In March this year, Rishi Sunak promised the government would ensure equal access to school football. And Vuban Moy is now part of a squad trying to add World Cup glory to European Championship success. But those players have been hit by injuries to key players, including her Arsenal teammates, Lionesses captain Leah Williamson and Euros top scorer Beth Mead. Looking at the squad, um, we will be missing players, but I know that uh, a lot of people will be stepping up this summer. And... Um, with our togetherness, with our family feel as, a, as an England squad, um, I have no doubt about the fact that they will feel confident and empowered to do so. Despite the disappointment of missing out, Mead had this message for her teammates. Wish I could be there with you all, but I'll be rooting from home. I'll be number one fan and I believe in every single one of you, staff and players included. So yeah, go out there, go and smash it and best of luck. England play Haiti in their opening match at half past ten tomorrow morning. The whole country is behind them. Chris Slegg, BBC London. Well, it's time for a look at the weather. Here's Katerina. Hello there, good afternoon to you. It is looking fairly cloudy through the rest of today. We'll see the occasional glimmer of brightness, but I think all in all, a lot of cloud around and a few showers. And you can see through this afternoon, these showers will be very hit and miss. There is a good chance you may miss them altogether, but it's going to be a lot of cloud around with some bright or sunny intervals. A moderate breeze today, and we're looking at highs of around 21 in Celsius. Now, through this evening and overnight, the majority of these showers should tend to clear out to the east. So just behind, by the end of the night, we'll be left with a mostly dry picture. We'll get a few clear spells coming through too. I think any rain should stay to the west of us. And our temperatures tonight will fall away to around 13 in Celsius. So a mild start to Saturday morning. I think it's going to be fairly cloudy from the get-go. We're going to hold onto that cloud through the afternoon with showers and spells of rain very on and off. And winds will strengthen tomorrow too. So a windy day, gusts of around 30, 35 miles per hour and a touch cooler too. Temperatures around 19 in Celsius. So Sunday it will stay windy with gusts again of around 30, 35 miles per hour. I think there'll be more sunshine around, so a brighter day overall, accompanied by a few showers. And as we head into next week, Monday, I think winds will be a touch lighter. There'll be quite a bit of cloud through the morning with a few showers around, but drier by the end of the day with a good deal of sunshine coming through and overall a much drier day through the day on Tuesday. Well, that's all from me, but there's lots more on our website and social media, including the story of a mum who gave birth on a coach. We'll be back with your main programme at 6.30. Have a lovely afternoon.